I'm not the first composer who got older and started writing biblical texts or something like that. You know, I, I, don't, I don't think it requires a great deal of explanation. Your mind goes to that, and so you want to set something that sort of um, prepares you and makes that you deal with it, and you know, as a composer. Instead of, you know, turning away, you just say, well, you know, this is going to happen, so, you know, let, let's investigate. I'm not the only one to go through this, that's for sure. So uh, a lot of people, uh, and these, there's a wisdom literature in all cultures, and uh, that literature always deals with life and death. It's, it's well-explored territory. There is a traveler's prayer in the Hebrew prayer book, um, which I did not use. Added to the prayer itself are short verses, biblical and from the Psalms, uh, which are customarily added on, and I really uh, zeroed in on those. Behold, I send a messenger before you to guard you on the way and to lead you to the place that I have prepared, which is from Exodus, and it's God talking to Moses about bringing people into the land. But obviously, if it's said over someone who's passed away or who is worried about uh, uh, their safety and root, it's a reassuring thing to say. Uh, the second text is, uh, to your lifeline I cling eternal, I cling eternal to your lifeline, eternal to your lifeline I cling. It's a permutation. It's as if you were drawing something around you and you wanted to make sure it was around so you'd get all three possible ways of saying it to protect yourself. The last text is from the Psalms. And I actually, it appears at the end of WTC 9-11, the piece I wrote about 9-11. Uh, and it says, uh, the eternal will guard your departure and your arrival from now till the end of time. And that's obviously to do with somebody who uh, wants to protect themselves and also could be said posthumously. So uh, that's, that concludes the text. It's always stimulating to me, and I think to probably most composers, when something arises and you realize, I'm not gonna do what I usually do. Traveler's Prayer is unique, and a lot of people have noticed that right away. There's no uh, enunciated pulse, there's no percussion. Uh, the vibes are there for color, they're mostly not even playing during the first eight minutes of the piece. Uh, so it's basically voices and strings, and a piano that sort of delineates the harmony with very low, mysterious entrances. The uh, musical impetus for this piece was melodic, these various chant melodies, and I was concerned with the melodic content, which in itself is used traditionally delivered not very rhythmically at all. This is the first time where I really want the text to be mysterious. It's, you know, yeah, it's there. And part of that probably involves not having such strong consonants more on the vowels. So they get this kind of blend of the voice and the strings together. So you almost have to listen in to hear the voice. Uh, there's a lot of uh, canons throughout the piece, mostly two voices, and they're dealing with one melody. So well, how do I get variety? So uh, I did, you know, sing it backwards, retrograde. Uh, sing it when they go, when the melody goes up, you go down, in inversion. These are techniques that go back to the 1300s. Uh, but I had, and I knew all about them, but I had never used them. So I thought, I want to get variety, but I want to stay close. To it. So, I, so I tried, it. again, something old in the world, but new for me. So I was on unknown territory. So um, when people hear Traveler's Prayer, they will not necessarily think it's my piece at all, for better or for worse. <laughs>